holding out your hand, regrettably, <coughs> you say that, give me something to do, I want to be a part of this. <coughs> when that happens, it is bloody magic, because that's when you start something big. On the other hand, if you're not epic enough, imagine you went out and said, we are go we're going to create the nation's third best tax auditing software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get <laughs> So once you have these lots and lots of volunteers, there's another thing. And that's how you optimize the organization. You're going to have thousands of people working, working with you to achieve your vision. But it's, a shared, it's a shared goal that everybody has. And the check and balance here is that they're volunteers. They're choosing to work with you on your goal. And they can use their two feet to walk away the minute they don't agree with it. So there's no need to vote on the goal. You set the goal. People join of their own volition. So how do you optimize? You optimize with three factors. You optimize for speed, trust, and scalability. Once you have your goal, which is tangible, inclusive, credible, and epic, you optimize for speed, trust, and scalability. You optimize for speed. A lot of MBA types talk about empowering people. When I t tell them what empowering meant in the pirate party, you sort of see the color drain from their face. <laughs> like, because in the pirate party, if three people agreed that something was beneficial for the movement, that something was beneficial for the end goal, then they had full authority to spend the organization's resources and talk and back in the organization's name to what they thought would benefit it. This is an extreme amount of decentralized, decentralized authority, but it takes a whole lot of effort to make people understand what it means. Because we are so used to thinking that power is power. That if I have all the power, I get to rule over all the other people. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's not how this works. We're voluntarians. We're libertarian. You have self-authority. You have self-empowerment. Just because you have this authority to act in the organization's name, that does not give you the power to tell what other people can cannot or must do, because they have the same power as you have. It's a self-empowerment mechanism. And explaining this, again, in voluntary principles, took quite some doing to people who just saw it as a new kind of framework. But once it hits, it's magic. Because what you're doing is you're pushing all the decision-making power to the edges of the organization usually beyond your own horizon, where, the, where there is best decision-making information. Instead, when we're asking permission for something, what we're really asking is somebody else to take accountability for our actions. And usually, they're in a much worse position to do so, to, to make an uninformed decision. We were 50,000 people, and this enormous amount of trust was not a big one. Not once. So you optimize for speed. You cut out the bottlenecks. You make it, well, for us, it wasn't even allowed to ask permission. If you think something is good, and if other people also think it's good, just do it. Sometimes we'll go wrong, but we are blazing a trail here. The only way to not make, not make any mistakes is to not do anything at all. Optimize for speed. Remove the bottlenecks. That's the first optimization. The second optimization is trust. <coughs> In a collectivist organization, 51% gets to decide what 
cannot do. But they all really share the same goal. And it's impossible when starting, starting out on a journey for whatever goal, to know exactly what and where the breakthrough will happen. You just have a sense that it will, you don't, but you can't predict exactly how. Kind of like how the financial state of the world right now will hit a trigger that causes major disruption. I don't know when or where the trigger will happen, but I'm, cons but I'm convinced it will. So, when you share this trust that, yeah, we are thousands of people. We are here because we share the same goal in general. I have no idea what those people are doing. I don't think I've even met those guys. <laughs> but it's okay that I don't understand how what they're doing will forward the goal because I know they share the same goals as we do, as I do, as we all do. And even if the, even if they fail, we all learn something. So having this deeply ingrained trust that we're all working toward the same goal means that you're all focusing on the positive things. You're all focusing on what everybody can do. You're focusing on what everybody is allowed to do. And you're taking fear out of the system. This is crucial. You're taking fear out of the system when you're instilling trust like this. And this has to come from you. This has to come from the, from the leader. We trust each other. That must be a strong message, almost on a cadence, to reinforce this. And last, we optimize for scalability. I've talked about how we optimize for speed, and we optimize for scalability. And the way we do this is that people tend to not be able to work in groups above certain sizes. When you have a group about seven or eight people, it breaks down into subgroups. When you have a loose group, loose chapter, for example, about 150 people, then they start dropping off without you noticing. So you need to be aware of these, frankly, hardwired limits into the human psyche and continuously create subgroups that talk to each other and still enable the scalability. Or it's going to be hard to come in about 150 active people. So you can have a world organization at the top of your life, if you like, of the pyramid is the world, and then continents, and then countries, and regions, cities, down to block level. That's how we did it in the past. <coughs> we moved down to one city district level, with, with Sweden being the top. And we had leaders and organizations at, it, at every level, completely voluntary. When you allow people to self-organize like this, when you see people being or taking on accountability, frankly, not a word, taking on accountability, and you have no idea who they are. They were appointed to this accountability way, way beyond your horizon. It's magic how the organization can grow and scale. So those three things is how you optimize. So we talked about how you get two orders of cost efficiency advantage by actually organizing as a voluntarist organization in the first place, by using the profit motive and the self-interest instead of trying to boss people around. We talked about how the goal needs to be tangible, inclusive, credible, and epic. And we talked about how you optimize for speed, trust, and scalability. And when you do these things, your reward will be that two our orders of magnitude of cost efficiency advantage. And one more thing. There's one more thing I didn't mention. That. And that's having fun. <laughs> this sounds like a cliche. Everybody talks about having fun, and then they put a flipper, then they put a pinball machine by, by the co in the coffee room and forget all about it. But when you have a voluntarist organization, it's actually required for success. If you're not having fun, you are failing. And I cannot emphasize that more. Because people, volunteers, people go to other people who seem to have fun. 
in contrast, people will easily walk an extra mile around groups who seem to be stuck in infighting. It's actually required for success that you are having fun while changing the world. Because that's the only way to attract more people. Even having the goal is not enough, they also need to like spending their time working with the organization. So coming up on the 35 minute, the minute 35 minute work mark, we talked a little bit about who I am, where I'm coming from. Serial entrepreneur, voluntarist, libertarian. How we founded the Pirate Party and what we learned from it. How you organize for liberty through voluntary principle, instead of, instead of voting, instead of coercion, instead of trying to force people. How you set the goal. How you organ optimize for speed, trust, scalability. And then you need to have fun. And if you want to read more about this, there's this 300 page book. <laughs> <laughs> but you can download it for free. Just search for this name, Warp Y, and it's one word. And I'll give you the PDF for exactly nothing. Perfect, because it's in my interest to spread the word of liberty. So it's entirely in my self interest that you can, you're able to download it. And there's also a work in, in beta with a software system that I've produced in the Pirate Party that, that is now being generalized. It's not ready for production use yet. If you want to see it come to production, if you want to see it come to fruition, or just hear it as to where it stands, it's in this swarm house. It's public domain and you can easily be find it on this house. There was some that, ops. That's 35 minutes I've allocated for talk. So thank you very much for listening and we have 15 minutes for questions.